What's up guys, Mason the Brock Anderson here. This is NCIS Season 13, Episode 19, Reasonable Doubts. Not the best case, but still a good episode. And what I mean by that is, the case itself was fairly straightforward. Um, I mean, I pretty much had it solved within like 10 minutes, I think. It was early on, like after I found out the story behind it, after I found out what was going on, it's just like, yeah, I know what's going to happen. Um, and the reason is, you've got one woman saying that the other one did it, you've got the other one saying that the other one did it, and it, both of their stories match up very well, like it has to be planned, and the only way that, the only reason why they would plan something like this, and they would plan it in this way, is if he shot himself and they didn't want anybody to know that he committed suicide. You know, like, it just, it's the only thing that made sense. It's the only, it wouldn't make any sense for one of them to have done it and then the other one to claim that the other one did it, because then all it takes is a lie detector test and you find out that the other one did it. And they didn't even suggest the lie detector test until halfway through, at which point I'm thinking, they're both going to pass it. They're both going to say, I didn't shoot him, and they're both going to pass it. And they did. Um... And then finding out that he won the lottery, I was like, yeah, it's definitely suicide now. <laughs> like, I can just, I can see it, it's suicide, and most likely there's something written that if he commits suicide, nobody's the beneficiary, so nobody's going to get the money, and yeah, pretty much very simple case, nothing I haven't seen before. Well, I, I'm pretty sure that I've seen something similar to this before. I, I have seen a suicide cover-up before. I've seen, um, you know, one one character commits suicide and then somebody tries to cover it up because they don't want anybody to know that they committed suicide. So, yeah. Case wasn't all that great. But it was still a good episode because of what was going on outside the case. Um, first of all, you know, Tim finally tells Eleanor... I don't know why I just called her Eleanor. <laughs> he finally told Bishop... Uh, that he's looking for a ring. It's just like, oh, it's so exciting. And it's interesting that she's the first one that he's told since she's just got out of her own marriage. I mean, obviously she's moved past it. It doesn't hurt her as much anymore. But it's kind of, it almost feels like fate that she's the first one that he told. Um, but besides that, what really, really got me into this episode was the story with Tony's dad. Um, didn't exactly... I don't know. It, I thought maybe they were going to do something crazy, like it actually did turn out to be his daughter, or maybe he discovered something about himself. But it really just was a good episode for Tony, in that he gets to see his dad kind of be this father for this uh, random homeless person. You know, like where Tony's a bit too old now and he's kind of moved on, he's kind of moved past the the all the times of, oh, I need my father. You know, they've moved past that. They've kind of worked stuff out. But to, for him to be able to see his dad kind of really look out for somebody and find purpose, too, is just, it's good for him to see. And you could tell by the look on his face at the end of it that he really did feel that way about it. He you know, he had a little smile at the end because he enjoys seeing his dad happy. He enjoys seeing his dad working towards something that's not a con, that's not him trying to, you know, broker a deal. It's just his dad doing something nice for somebody else. He hasn't gotten to see that a lot. So for him to be able to experience that in this episode was really well done. It was a real uh, tearjerker, too. I mean, first this homeless girl comes up, thinks that he's her father, um... And then you start to find out more about her. You find out that she's got a brain tumor that's killing her. You find out that her own father rejected her because she came out as gay. And it just, this story just kept piling on misery after misery. They find her on a bench and she's got like pigeons eating out of her hand because she got the pigeon feed. And, you know, he starts talking to her and she's like, you don't like me because of who I am. And he's just like, no, no, it's not true. It, it really was heartwarming and heartbreaking at the same time um so it, it is nice to see that yeah maybe the case was a little too predictable yeah it wasn't the best i've seen a whole lot better on the show 
the the mystery wasn't that hard to figure out. But the story the story with Tony's dad was still really heartwarming and enjoyable to watch. And that's kind of what NCIS gives you. You know, week after week, episode after episode, you still get enjoyment out of an episode. I mean, I still laughed a few times. They, they still have good jokes. Um, and the fact that they can emotionally move me is pretty good after 13 seasons. You know, not many shows can still do that. So, um, yeah, that's about it for this episode. Fairly straightforward. Um, <laughs> most NCIS reviews are, I guess. But, yeah. Good episode. I'm I'm excited to see where the rest of the season is going though because we're we are near the end. We're in the last few episodes. This is the 19th episode, so we still got I think four more, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, five more. Um, so they may have something planned for the end of this season, like some epic case that's going to take the last few episodes. So don't know where it's going, but I'm excited to see it. Um, that's all I have to say. So let me know what you think down in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe for more NCIS. I'll see you at the next review. Peace out.